Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF, uh, back in the shop after a uh, short recess there. I was uh, feeling pretty down last week, uh, but again, through some self-healing and uh, uh, rest, really sweating it out, things like that, I was able to, uh, to get up to about 85%. I'm good, feeling good, back down the shop, wanted to get another video. I want to thank you all so much for your well wishes and your prayers. I really think... Uh, I think at this point, prayers helps more than modern medicine, but uh, do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, we have a, just a, a short one to get back into it today. I want to deal with some punches. You know, we talked about screwdrivers last week, and I wonder how many punches everybody has. And so let's get started right away. Okay, last week, if you remember, I asked uh, a, a quick, good question. I was like, you know, if you have screwdrivers, how many screwdrivers do you think you have? Boy, what a tremendous response we got. I was shocked at how many people have large amounts of screwdrivers. I mean, uh, Resto Rob did a video. He must have a couple hundred there. And uh, Reggie over in the UK has got a couple hundred. But some, a lot of people have had, you know, 50 and above is, was quite common. So a, a good amount of you have a ton of screwdrivers, which is, you know, commendable. And we need them. However, one other tool that we tend to have multiples of, and I mean more than, you know, two or three, is the humble punch. Now, a lot every time I show my some of my punches that I have in containers like this, everybody gets a kick out of it and says they want to do it for themselves. I just found these at Home Depot. Uh, again, these are like a polyethylene. They're not the hard plastic. The hard plastic tend to crack and chip. These are quite flexible. You know, you could bend them and they, they tend to be pretty good. And this is nice because they got the removable inserts because you usually need two of these squares for a punch, a decent sized punch. So this is good. And uh, I have some punches that I've had aside here that just some of my spares I wanted to clean up. What do you say we take a look and uh and see what we can do with these. now like screwdrivers there are so many different types of punches that uh and each one has a specific uses we'll go over that in a minute and we'll go over how to dress your punch how to uh, check it to make sure that you won't have any issues with it but first we got to clean them up a lot of these punches because of the knurling and things like that or where they're stored they tend to uh to get a little rusty and whatnot but the, the good thing is the wire brush does a fantastic job that's really all you need wire brush wipe them down with some light oil and uh, and then you store them so let's clean these up and then we'll go through the different types of punches what you need what you should have and uh, what some of these okay, do okay let's quickly talk about uh the punches homemade punches things like that you might acquire or you might make because you want to customize a tip for a certain job obviously this isn't a homemade punch it's a beautiful craftsman punch with a hexagon top just absolutely fantastic right double knurling nice imprinting just a, a beautiful punch now uh punches are tempered differently and uh most punches good punches will have a softer top here and a harder tip here this is the business end so you want this hard so it don't mushroom out but up here you want this to be softer so when you hit it with a hammer or anything hard that this doesn't chip or break so that's the way uh, uh, punches are supposed to be tempered. Now, obviously, if you buy some punches from overseas or whatnot, they temper the whole thing. One, one uh, temper, which is usually hard, so a lot of times the tops are hard. you got to be very careful. Now, what happens with uh, a good punch or a chisel or anything is as you're banging it, the top will mushroom. That's normal. It's meant to mushroom because, like I said, it's, it's softer up here. But what you have to do is we have to dress that every once in a while. And this one you can see was dressed down, you know. So if you see your punches starting, especially if they start to split on the top, very important that you dress these down. And to do that, we just take it to the belt sander or grinding wheel and you just turn it around. I'll show you in a minute how that's done and uh, and take that off. So if it's, if it's too much, a little bit's okay. But uh, this could split off and enter your body, believe it or not. Hasn't happened to me, but I've had... Uh, a lot of you mentioned that it did happen to you or somebody you know. So let's dress a couple of these down. Okay, we just dressed the back of all these uh, these punches. And some are kind of a chisel like over here. But we did all the back. And again, you want to do the side. And you also want to do a little bit on the edge here. You want no sharp edges. It should be buttery smooth around the top. 
they're all done. You can see this one here that was a little bit worse, but now here you can see it's a nice top. You don't have to worry about that splitting off. Now you can address the tips since you got the grinder out. Now there are different geometry for tips to make them strong. For example, this is an extremely strong profile for a tip. You can see how it comes down here and it's a double taper. One taper, two tapers. That top is really very, very strong. Whereas if you have a, uh, a tip like this, obviously something that's tapered, one, it's one straight taper almost all the way down until the, it gets very sharp, almost like a needle, um, that you have to be very careful of because that doesn't have the same strength. But however, it's very sharp. You can get, if you were you know, doing plastics or something soft, this would be good. This was a homemade, this was in the punches, but obviously it's not a punch. This is a needle file that somebody ground into a punch and there was, uh, there was four of them in there and I cleaned them up, but you could see they could come in handy. If you have a broken file, you can take it, but you have to be very careful. This is better off as a pick than it is as a punch. Let me show you here. This is a homemade, another homemade uh, punch that somebody made. You can see here, they did the top. This was an old file, you see? And you see here the tip, how they ground the tip. And that's fine. The problem is it's not differentially hardened. So the tip is probably gonna be hard, unless it was near the handle. Um, you have to be very careful that you don't, to, number one, split the tip or uh, again, that when you're grinding it and stuff. Um, so if you're going to make a homemade punch, re, you know, keep an eye on it. Say, okay, I'm not going to wail on this. I'm not going to really hit hard with a sledgehammer. This be fine for woodworking or softer materials, things like that, or to put a dimple in something. But, you know, be leery of that whenever you pick up a punch. Next up, we have what's commonly known as a nail set. Um, and this type of punch is a little bit different because of the t again, look at the variance of tips, how many different styles of tips you have here. Now, your typical straight nail set that might look like this here, this could be used to uh, punch a hole in, and this one here has been ground a little bit for a specialty job, but let's say this one here, you can use this to punch a hole into, uh, into an, an area before you drive a nail or whatever the case may be, or a screw. Also, um, you can use this to punch very, very small nails. However, uh, and if you look here, you look closely, a lot of finishing nails and finishing nails are meant to be usually sunk down just a little bit below the surface of the wood. At least a lot of them have a hole in the top like that. And that's so you could take your nail set, put it in there and punch it down. And it's much easier, it won't slip off. That's what that little recess or hole is for. It's on a lot of different nails. You can see here, two different types, two different holes, but that's what that little hole is for, to center and to hold your nail set so you can drive it down. Now, if you have a real small uh, brad or nail like this, it's so small, it's very hard to get on there. It's almost as big as the nail set. So then you would take a hollow punch, and what happens with a hollow punch, it's a hollow set, is it fits over the top of the nail. And uh, let me get one here. Here we go, you can see the tip of this punch or nail set is, is hollowed out. And that's because that'll fit right over the top of your nail like this. And when you're driving it in, you can see you could drive it in without it slipping off and marring or damaging the rest of the surrounding woodwork. That's what that's for. So a lot of times you'll see these, that's really good if you find these. Again, they're not so common, but they're meant mostly for smaller work, bread work, finished carpentry, things like that. Now, sometimes you might come up with, this is a beautiful little chisel. Look at this, it's got a nice wide flare on top. You could see here, it's a Dasco. And uh, you can see here, the tip geometry, uh, it's strong, but it's a little bit blunt for the for what I might wanna use it. So I wanna sharpen this up a little bit. I'm gonna take it to the belt stand and reprofile this. And I'll show you how you can reprofile a tool to make it really helpful for what kind of work you do. Okay, here we go. You see we did a nice little touch up on that tip. How nice does that look? Not super sharp, but just sharp enough for what I like to do. Either I could use it metal or wood, but a nice size, isn't it? Just a nice little size to bang. Let me show you a couple other custom punches that people made and I got a hold of. Next up, look at these two custom ground punches. Somebody, you know, they broke or whatever, they regrounded, but this is the kind of punch you could tell a craftsman used because first of all, it did a nice grind getting that down. It, it broke a little bit since then. It needs a touch up, 
but you can see here what a nice job they did this is an old starrett so it was probably a machinist did that and this one here this is an older punch out it has no markings on it but it's just what a beautiful size and there's no reason to have huge punches for most of the time a lot of times you just you want to get it here you rest it on your the palm of your hand and you put it and you just want it to be a little bit above your hand so you're not smacking your hand but uh, this is great. It fits in your pocket. I bet you somebody used this a ton of times. These are your pin style punches, usually made to drive in or out pins. And you have to be very careful because a lot of times they will bend, you know, and people bend them back, which weakens them and you'll be driving it and they snap. It happens a lot because a lot of times these are very long. But remember, if they do break, especially if they still got a little bit, just grind it off like this. And that's still good for most pin or punch applications but they do come exceptionally long and they and because of that they are usually quite fragile uh this is a style you usually see a lot craftsmen made these this one here's a wizard mayhew made these a, a lot but this is a really good size it's just over a quarter inch and it's a, it's a good size to have but uh, these always do come in handy. Now, this is your metalworking style punch, or Starrett made this design uh, very popular. And you can tell whenever you look for a Starrett type, they usually have the top here nicely ground. You see in the, the top here, it's not, uh, it's not wide. It's a round punch all the way. Now, the funny thing is, machinists punch a lot of times around, but they tend to roll off areas. But if you're a machinist, you think everything's gonna be level. Whereas a woodworker, you know, they're always squared so that they don't roll off the table. But uh, Starrett did come out with this style for a while, a squared shank that won't roll off. But see what happens when you have a uh, regular punches that uh, don't have anything square or rectangular or octagon. They do tend to roll. But this is a nice one too, a nice style, very strong. You can see the tip, heavy duty but uh, typical metal working punches. Our next specialty punch is a, uh, you can see here, it's got a moving piston inside of a hollow tube. This is a self-centering punch made for hinges. And uh, usually, especially the better ones, if you get a good American made one, you won't have any, it's re they're very accurate. What they're made for, if you ever tried to hang a hinge or anything with a hinge on it, it's imperative that you get that screw hole exact. So if this hinges here, you want this. So what happens is if you're off as much as a 32nd of an inch with your hole and that screw is off, it's going to cock the hinge one way or the other and you're gonna get binding in your door or, or your lid of your box or whatever. So this is something that's really handy. You put it here, you straighten it out and then you give it a quick tap like this and that will put a hole exactly where the center of that hinge is. And uh, you can see it will line up. I moved it, but it would be exactly in the center. And then you can put your screw in or whatever. So this is important if you're gonna do hinges or, or anything. It's a good tool to have, self-centering. Last up, we're not gonna go into these today, but I want to I'll show you how these work one day. We'll do roll pins, but these are roll pin punches. If you ever see a ball on the top of a punch and say, what the heck is that for? That's for, for roll pins, those uh, steel split pins or whatever. That's for taking the, them uh, out of uh, where they are without mushrooming them. And these come in really handy, really important to have. You know, like I said, for the once in a blue moon you, you use them, they're good to have. Okay, so there we go. We put all these punches in these two cases here. It's always good to have a dedicated punch hammer, brass, one pound, if you can find one. We, you know... They don't sell these anymore, but Tecton made a really nice one pound. They were inexpensive on Amazon. Uh, they work great for the punches, keeps the backs from mushrooming out. There you have one side. Again, these are different ones. You don't want to make them too deep, so you're digging through them. You want to be able to see what you need from the top. So get a few of these containers, put your punches in there, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, next up, real quick, Christmas gift for my sister. Um... You remember I found one of these on one of my walks and I, I just fell in love with it. An old fashioned washboard and I had to buy another. This one's a national. I got this at uh, Jacktown and uh, you can see it's a little bit dusted up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it up and uh, I'm gonna oil it up and I'm gonna show you how you do that to make it look, to really make it look good. First thing, we're gonna wipe it down with a damp rag. Now that everything, all the dust is removed, we cleaned everything. Now we're gonna do is we're gonna oil it. And we're going to use, what I'm going to use is Old English 
furniture polish. It's a lemon oil. And all it basically is, it's a has some citrus, uh, lemon citrus, lemon for a nice scent, mineral oil, a couple other ingredients, but this really saturates. They use this on furniture. It's really good. It's a thin oil. Again, mineral oil is always good. Soaks into the grain because, now you see they're dry. When I put this on here, again, you don't want too big of a rag because you're going to waste a lot when it absorbs into the rag, you know. So just put a little bit on here like this and wipe it in. And then this leather is what happens. At first, it'll look like it's it's blending in. But after this dries a little bit, it'll really make all this come out and look nice. I'll show you. What now, believe it or not, the part you really have to saturate with the oil is the feet. The feet have been in and out of water, dried up. There's no natural oils left. They get very brittle. So by saturating it with some oil, it brings back that life in the fibers. With any other piece of wood, you can always tell how dry it is when you put oil on it or anything and, and, and watch how quickly it absorbs into the wood. Now that's already the second coat and look how quickly that's absorbing in. The closer you get to the end grain, the more that'll suck, suck right in. See that? It's disappearing. And uh, that's why you got to really douse the end grain with oil just to keep this from splitting. Because if she lays it on, you know, puts it on the ground next to, to display it or something, you don't want this thing chipping and splitting up. Watch how dry this is. Now in a few hours, all this oil will dry in and uh, suck into the wood. And it'll look, uh, it'll give a nice look. I'll show you tomorrow. After a couple hours, you can see how it blends in. Okay, so in closing, um, that's interesting. Let me know if you have, uh, how many punches you have. If, am I the only one that has, uh, you know, as you saw, just there was about 70 punches. So I guess I must have a couple hundred. I wonder how many punches. I know you're not going to have as many as screwdrivers because a lot, of them, or maybe you do. Let me know. And I uh, wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, whichever you might uh, celebrate. And uh, we will be having a video on Christmas Day, Monday. So uh, maybe a short one or a show and tell or something. But I hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy it and uh, enjoy your time with your friends and family. Thanks so much again for your well wishes. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.